Today's video, talking about the Russian threat in World War III. Stay tuned for more. Hi folks, welcome to Set Apart Homestead. This is Travis, the Prepared Homestead. And it's one of those cold but sunny days. I've mentioned it before, how I kind of like those of winter where it's cold and sunny at the same time. Well, that's today. Um, so I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind a lot over the past several weeks, actually. I've been contemplating this as a video, trying to figure out how to, how to work it and kind of waiting, getting more information about what I think most of us had for many years, at least since the Cold War, perceived as a potential threat to America and to, you know, freedom. And that is Russia. And I wanted to talk about the potential there for World War III, which I know is always in the minds of, of preppers. You know, they're kind of the go-to country of like, yeah, well, you know, Russia could nuke us, Russia could invade us, blah, blah, blah. And there's probably a lot of preppers out there that uh, the reason, one of the big reasons they do what they do is potentially the threat from Russia. Um, and so I think sometimes because of that, we tend to discount them anymore as a threat because it's talked about so much and we focus on other things. You know, one of the things I've talked about recently is uh, what's going on in Virginia. Uh, while there could definitely be a threat to freedoms there, uh, I also wonder how much of what's going on in Virginia could be a rouge, you know, could be uh, some, um, some type of, you know, moving of the chess pieces to get gun owners and people in militias out in the open more. I don't know, um, but I suspect there's a whole lot more going on there than what you or I are privy to know. But this Russia thing, I think it's something we still need to keep our eyes on. Uh, and I've got a little information that I've kind of been collecting in my mind. Um, and uh, so back in January of 2019, this year, and some of you know this, some of you may not, there was a congressional study uh, reported on that uh, our intelligence were saying that Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea were developing a super EMP. China has publicly said that they have an, a super EMP in their arsenal. Um, from what I'm gathering on our side, our government is saying we don't know if we necessarily believe them. It could just be an empty threat, them you know, making us think they have one, but whatever. So, to start off with, a super EMP is, is much bigger than a regular EMP. A regular EMP, uh, while it can be catastrophic, is not as bad as what maybe TV hype uh, and internet hype is. A super EMP would most likely not knock out the United States. It may knock out a region, and even at that, um, reports show that on a super EMP there's going to be certain things and, and certain cars and stuff that they might shut off but they could be restarted again um, and there's definitely going to be some frying of infrastructure but it's not going to be quite as catastrophic with just one uh, EMP detonation whereas a super EMP while it's never really been used uh, because of the magnitude of it and the height that it would be detonated at somewhere of 30 kilometers or more into the atmosphere. Um, it's very, there's a big potential that a super EMP could knock out uh, an entire nation or continent, possibly even the entire United States, uh, and that even items protected in a Faraday cage would not be protected uh, because of a super EMP. The, the amount of uh, in intense frequency that would come from it, that it's possible that many things would not be protected at all, and that, that it really would fry uh, a lot of, of infrastructure and electronics and, and things of that nature. So anyways, back to Russia, China, Iran, and all that. They're over here saying that, um, or China is especially, saying that they're, they have one and they're developing it, or they're developing it and they have one. We have a congressional study in January stating that very fact. Then in April, for those of you who remember, in April is when President Trump issued his executive order uh, basically ordering 
utility companies and government agencies to reevaluate and check their hardness when it comes to EMPs. Now, that's not a coincidence that um, you have this congressional report stating that uh, you know these nations that are at odds with us are developing this weapon that can completely knock out not just the electrical grid but v virtually most electronics uh, and electrical devices in the United States then you a few months later you have the president issued an order saying that you know you guys you companies you agencies need to do an evaluation and harden your equipment against such an attack and then you have this DHS study coming out that uh, basically telling Americans that they need to be prepping, basically. They need to, be, need to have at least two weeks of supply uh, on hand uh, and potentially up to six months. So you have that. Now, let's look at a few other things. And this, some of this is more recent and others isn't. Um, for instance, Sweden uh, was doing a little bit of study on some European nations. And Sweden... Um, they are the thought I heard something behind me for a moment sorry about that <laughs> um, they're the country that many of you know during uh, World War II and the Cold War uh, they were known for having a very large civilian mili military force um, and they've they've always boasted that uh, at some point towards the end of the Cold War that kind of stopped being a big thing there and there wasn't as big a push on preparation for potential attack from Russia. They, they had at one point in their history, back in the 60s, they had enough government-built fallout shelters, bunkers, to house the entire nation, and now they do not. Um, about 10 years ago, I think it was, I think it was 2010, so it would be eight or nine years ago, about 10 years ago soon, sorry. I'm behind times, I'm still thinking it's 2018. <laughs> Um, so about 10 years ago, they started ramping up that again. And in the last few months, uh, they have been putting calls out to their people. They actually have sent literature out to everyone in the nation of, of, Sw of Sweden to become preppers, basically. That they need to start prepping for invasion from the Russians. Uh, their, dis their, their defense agency in Sweden... Uh, was interviewed stating that they, from the, inf the intelligence that they've been gathering, that the Russians are planning a large-scale attack. This is recent information, the last, you know, few months. Um, there's a lot of things, if you start digging around online, there's a lot of stuff out there that's not being covered at all by any American media. And it's uh, things that's happening, that's always happened with Russia, but the, the increase is a lot. And that is Russia you know, tiptoeing into other people's territories, uh, spy submarines being discovered in uh, foreign waters, um, airplanes, uh, Russian air, uh, MiG planes uh, intercepting um, uh, passenger jets and flying into airspace of other countries. Uh, they're uh, doing training uh, on the border where other nations can see them. The gathering, the large gathering of tens of thousands of troops along their western border. Um, things that, um, for instance, the uh, uh, Swedish um, defense guy that I was watching, uh, the interview with him, I can't remember his name, but he was basically saying, you know, at, at this point there's not been a verbal threat, but there's obvious this build up. And even though there's not a verbal threat, he said, just alone, the buildup is enough that we need to start, you know, taking notice of this and start planning and being worried. Two weeks ago, the very top military person in Russia, he's the head of all their military, um, made a statement using the words that we are preparing for World War III. I mean, you can't get more direct than that. So what does that mean for us? I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm only listing a few things. There's a lot more out there. You know, it'd be a very long video for me to list all the things that's going on with Russia. Um, you know, there's, there's obvious in the last few years, actually the last decade or so, that they have been trying to assert themselves as the world leader. I think that's, that's pretty much, you know, known that they're trying to do that. And um, there's, there's been a lot of saber-rattling between Russia 
in the United States and other countries. Uh, will it go to that point of being another world war? That's the big million dollar question, I guess. Um, and I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know is that Russia has the capability uh, of at least starting something like this. This top general uh, that was talking about World War III, and then there was also, I think maybe their defense minister alluded to this also, that the next world war would be a nuclear war. Um, that in, in some way indicating that they are prepared to use them. Um, and that would really change a lot of things. Uh, even if Russia only invades Europe, you know we're going to be involved. And if they were smart about it, if they invaded Europe, they would simultaneously attack the United States to knock us out so that we couldn't go to you know, Europe's defense. Um, you know, of course, I'm hypothesizing. I'm just telling you what I would do. And so I think as those in a preparedness mindset, we can never discount them as a military threat and a threat to our freedoms. Um, and when you throw in Iran and China and North Korea, uh, and then the fact that the Russians are pretty old school about things, uh, they, they look for weaknesses. If they see a country that is weak, uh, it's just kind of bred into them that, you know, that weakness is a sign of, of, of a potential, you know, target. And I think that it's, <clears throat> there's no, <laughs> I don't know that there's anyone that would argue to the point that, that, that Europe has become weak. All of Europe. They have very much weakened. They, while I don't know that I would say that Europe has ever been a very supremely strong backbone of, a, of an area with, you know, and nations in there. They definitely were, were much more than they are now. Most of the nations in Europe have become very watered down. They have allowed way too many uh, refugees into their country and you're seeing the whole face of Europe change. And uh, uh, pretty much these countries are, have just lost their backbone. So Europe is not really a threat to them anymore, and they know it. Russia knows that. The thing is, is I think they're probably starting to see that with America. And I know there's going to be the arguments that, well, Donald Trump's the president, so they see Russia as differently, or see America as different. The America now once has a backbone again. I, I don't quite buy that. Um, of all the bad things that Putin is, He's definitely a brilliant man. I believe he's a very smart man, and I believe he's a very strong, capable leader. Um, and I don't think that he sees Donald Trump as much of a threat. And I think that his down, biggest downfall is his arrogance. And he probably sees that America has also become weak and that he's arrogant enough to believe that he could take us over. And he possibly could. We don't know. So the point of this is, is that while you're thinking about all these other things that's going on in the world that we talk about on this channel quite often, uh, we cannot discount the threat that's been there for the last seven decades, uh, and that is Russia. I believe that, that they have been and always will continue to be a threat, and it does have, there is evidence showing that they are building themselves up. Is it more saber rattling that is meaningless? I don't know. But um, there, is, there are definitely things coming from Russia to indicate uh, that they could be uh, gearing themselves up for some type of invasion. And regardless of where that invasion is, you can bet that we will be involved. And once we're involved, um, I think the gloves will be off when it comes to the United States. And uh, most people that you talk to, including experts that you listen to, will tell you that they believe that the next truly world war will be a nuclear war, uh, that those will be used. And that's going to definitely affect us here. Uh, just because Russia is on the other side of the planet uh, does not mean that they cannot harm us here which would be something new that Americans haven't had to deal with in a very long time. So I just wanted to bring this to you. Some of you may already know all these things, but it's something that you really kind of have to dig around for. You have to really kind of dig on what's going on with Russia. 
uh, you know, what they're saying, what they're doing, what the nations around them are seeing and doing, uh, because this kind of stuff is certainly not being talked about by the American media. Uh, even a lot of the small media uh, that's online, just they don't pick it up. So definitely be aware of this kind of stuff. Be thinking about it, uh, doing the research. Uh, you know, it, there could definitely be a threat there. And I think it's something as those of us that like to stay prepared should be aware of. Um, because... We certainly wouldn't want to be preparing for all these other things and then the, this one huge threat that's been glaring us in the face for so many decades catches us off guard. So, uh. anyways, I think that's about all I have for today. I wanted to say real quick before I close is go ahead and click the subscribe button below. Um, it really helps me out and I appreciate it immensely. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.